The legendary cellist Pablo Casals said that the most perfect technique is that which is not noticed at all. This is a quote that captures my ideas on the qualities of great technique. My name is Robert Young, and in this video, I'll share with you concepts that I've been using for many years to produce relaxed, even, and controlled technique. The concept that I'll be showing you in this video is one that I've been using since I was in high school. It is by far the main tool that I use to increase my technique speeds and is what I use to maintain an even, relaxed stroke while playing my instrument. Before I introduce this model to you, I want to reinforce that slow practice is extremely necessary to build your speeds. I use what I call the technique pyramid. You can see here that the base of the pyramid enforces slow practicing which should make up the majority of your repetitions. As you increase the tempo closer to your goal, the repetition should decrease. For instance, if my goal is to be able to play a certain passage at 120 beats per minute, I will choose to put the metronome around 60 and play it between 10 to 20 times, sometimes even more. The idea is that you're solidifying a strong foundation with each slow repetition that you can execute correctly. As you speed up the metronome, the number of repetitions should decrease until you reach your goal at 120, which by that point, you should only play it two or three times. When I'm faced with a technical passage, I use a series of rhythms coupled with a basic formula to polish everything about my technique. We know that our minds process smaller chunks quicker than larger ones. With this in mind, the following rhythms will help us to focus on only two notes of a group of four at any given time. To illustrate these rhythms, I will just use a simple scale. The first rhythm is a dotted one. The second, you are essentially playing two notes slow, followed by two quick notes. The third rhythm is the inverse of rhythm number two. Finally, the fourth rhythm places the two quicker notes in the middle. Now, the interesting thing is if you play these rhythms at two-thirds the speed of your goal tempo, the quicker notes will be the same speed as your 16th notes at your goal tempo. In other words, if my goal is 120, I would need to play these rhythms at 80 beats per minute, which is two thirds of 120. So essentially playing the rhythms at 80 is the exact same as playing them straight at 120. Remember, as we discuss with the pyramid of technique, the closer we get to playing the two thirds tempo mark, we should in turn play less repetitions. I recommend cycling through each of these four rhythms several times before moving the tempo any faster. Again, remember that the closer the tempo gets to the two-thirds mark, make sure that you're playing less repetitions. Now that you've gone through the process of cycling through all of these rhythms, slow the metronome back down and play the music as it is written. And be sure to use this pyramid concept that we've been referring to throughout this entire video to reach your goal tempo. Right away, you may notice that you're playing with greater ease and a more relaxed touch. This is one of the immediate advantages of going through this process. A couple of things to keep in mind as you're going through this process. Concentrate on eliminating unnecessary tension from your fingers. 
As you're playing, be aware of your touch. Focus on keeping your fingers light and try not to allow your fingers to come too far off of your keys. Also, if you have rhythms in triple, like triplets and sextuplets, the two thirds rule doesn't necessarily apply. But I would highly encourage you to break down those passages by using other creative rhythms. Now, to be quite honest, I understand that it takes quite a bit of time to go through all of these steps. But I'm confident if you embrace it, you'll see significant improvements in your technique. And I, for one, also find that going through these steps helps me retain information much longer. 